to hit record so that um, I don't forget this and I get involved in what we're doing. So welcome everyone to our Thursday night art club session. Um, today we're doing CD weaving tapestries. Um, I didn't, I forgot to bring home my tapestry from school, but you guys saw the picture on the flyer that I sent you. Um, and those are strung from ones that uh, my students did. Actually, they did them right before we got thrown out of school when COVID actually hit. So that's how long they've been sitting in my room and I finally put them all together. Um, so this is really, I, I started to see this project pop up all over Facebook um, before COVID happened. And I just thought it was a great way to recycle materials, get rid of all that scrappy yarn from that we all, that pile that we all have in our classrooms and keep the kids busy. You know, I would tell them to go work on their weaving after they finished another project. It's just something, keep their minds and hands busy and keep them relaxed. And it turned out really well. And then I wanted to hang them like a tapestry. And this week I ordered the most coolest thing I have ever done in my life. So, and I love Amazon. Is Amazon not the greatest thing in the world? Amazon <laughs> is amazing. So I was thinking, how am I going to hang the discs all together once they're made? You need something to drill a hole in the plastic that's not gonna shatter it. So I bought a Dremel. It is the coolest thing in the world. And it comes with different little drill sizes. And you. it even has, I have to order attachments for a little like saw blade so I can cut stuff too. Oh my God, I feel like it's Christmas. It was the <laughs> easiest thing. I drilled two holes in each CD and then strung them one after the other and it made life so easy. And this is my most favorite thing. It's like Oprah's favorite things. This is Abby's favorite things. This is Stephanie's favorite things. We so, use a Dremel to, to carve into gourds with the yeah. Nysada art teachers here. That would be fun for me to maybe present at some point. Yes. Yeah. Where do you get gourds? I'm hearing so much about gourds. And do you get them dried? Or yes. and if not, how do you dry them? And then what do you do with a gourd? Um, I will show you pictures of mine. I'll actually look and see if I have some now. Okay. I'll look in my. So we will talk about that because maybe now I'm going to nail you down for a session for that. I've seen <laughs> I've seen beaded gourds that are gorgeous, mm -hmm. and and I love beading mosaics. And okay, I'm getting off tangent, and I'm sorry. It's been a while since I've talked to you guys. So, okay. So here is a. All right. I'm gonna let me see if I can make my document camera so that you can see, yes, it works. And I'm going to pin myself or spotlight myself. That's what I should do, right? Can you see my hands? Yes. Okay. So here's the regular CD, plain and simple. And this is one that I have strung. Let me get my bearings here, sorry. It's very it, shiny. It's very shiny. Should I take one? Yes. Light? Okay. Let's see if this is better. Is yep. better? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I pulled, and this is regular string. I'm not, I might have gotten this on Amazon as well. Um, so what I did was I pulled about two and a half yards of string. And then I tied it. Do you want me to show you how to start it? Yes, yes. please. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna pull a little bit of string here. Two and a half yards is about what I used and then there's still extra. So you may not need all that much. I know it's important if you're counting it out for each kid. So um, you're going to pull the string through the center and tie the knot. You know what, let me adjust my settings here. Hang on. I don't know if I can. It looks very fuzzy. Does it, do I look fuzzy to you? It looks dark. 
Well, the the light was reflecting off of the disc, so I turned off my my overhead. Hang on a second, bear with me. Your hand is not fuzzy. You mean blurry? Blurry, yes. No, it's it's not blurry. All right, hang on. Let me see what I'm doing here. Um, resolution is high, and I want to rotate. Okay. okay. Did anything change here? No, nothing changed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, see what I said about um, technology not working when you want it to. All right. Yeah. So move the light and put it back on so it's not directly. Is that better? Worse? Everything but the CD is better. All right. Okay. Um, I think if you hold the CD up a little bit, the light glares on it less. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, like closer, like that. <laughs> closer. All right. Maybe I'll just push it down some. And there we go. How's yeah. that? Okay. Um, All right. Nice. So now we're going to tie this knot tight. And I'm actually going to pull the knot to the center of the CD. Okay. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Then I'm just going to wrap the string through it and around all the way around to the other side. And it has to end on an odd number. So I think I have 31 here. Because if you don't, you're going to get a double. I don't know if you guys have woven before, uh -huh. um, but you want to be able to constantly go, you know, over, under, over, under. So it has to be an odd number. Odd number of spokes. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember which is the warp and which is the weft, if you want to get technical. This is the, the warp, warp that and the weft is what you put through it. Thank you. Okay. So the warp has to be an odd number. So if you're working along, um, string it or, or wrap it rather 31 times or, or less, you know, depending on your age, the age of your students, they might need less. So they have more room to go over under. Um, I have high schoolers and I like to, to add more of a over under opportunity, if that makes any sense. Uh -huh. Okay. So once you're ready to go, you can trim your extra string. If I'm going too fast, just, just let me know. And uh, you can use, I have used two different needles in my classes and it depends on your comfort level again with your string. <clears throat> I have the metal ones, which are tapestry needles with the big eye. You need something with a big eye because they, depending on the size of the wool, um, and I also have the plastic one. So it's really your preference. I like the, the metal ones. So you can use either one. And then just pull a strand of yarn. You don't want it too short because then you'll have to constantly be tying on new. I felt like I needed a little sunshine. So I took this yellow yarn. And of course, it's already knotted. So you guys can't make notches around the edges of the CD, the string. Um, well, I could with the Dremel, but that's a little more work than I want to deal with. It's OK, because once it's once you start weaving it, um, you can adjust the spacing and it'll stay in place. Okay. Yeah, that's not that big a deal. Okay, so we thread the needle. Um, I've noticed that a lot of students have trouble keeping the thread through the needle. Uh -huh. And a lot of the younger ages do as well. So you might want to just, you know, tie, tie it onto the thread or the yarn so it doesn't come off. I just finished a project this week where my students were stitching handmade journals. 
And every two seconds they would come to me and say, my needle fell off. I said, okay, so put it back on. Again, these are high schoolers. Uh -uh. I'm like, really? And it's wax thread with, you know, a big eye needle just, okay. But, and then they like, it's going to fall out again. I said, okay, so tie a knot. How do you tie a knot? You know how to tie your shoelaces? So even high schoolers have that problem? (laughs) Yeah. The high school, it's like, my God. (laughs) Yeah really really i so i said it's just like tying your shoe just make that's what i say yeah i've been weaving with my third second and third graders and i'm finally like who knows how to tie a knot look at those five people go to one of them instead of me there you go there you go (laughs) um okay so once you have your needle ready to go you're going to loop your your yarn under one of the spokes and tie a knot to get started. And you're gonna tie a knot like close to the center. And if you want, you could probably slip it around to the back once you know which is gonna be your back and your front if you wanna hide the knot. It doesn't really bother me because we could hide it also later on once we've gotten started. And then you just go along and you weave. Um, have, is there anybody with me who has never done weaving before? I, I've done weaving before, but can you show me again where you tied that? Because I'm still warping my loom. Okay, I was so I, let me get into my camera. Brain. So I tied the knot to one of the, uh, there we go, one of the spokes. Can you okay. see? And then I pulled it toward the center. Okay. So you're going to work from the center out. Okay, so it's just like we've been a plate now, a circle plate. I do that with my third graders. You're just going around and around. Yes, it's just okay. going around. Instead of going side to side, you're going totally in, in like a spiral, I guess. Um, so you pick whichever you want to start with, over, under, over, under. And then you could do a couple of spokes at a time and pull your yarn through. And the other thing is that the kids always get their stuff knotted. So you don't wanna give them too much, but not short enough where they're constantly cutting and knotting and adding more. Um, And as you go, you can use your needle or your fingers to push it toward the center. I find (coughs) that the tighter you make your weave, the the better it looks to me, but I guess that's subjective for everybody too. And it also depends on the size of your yarn. The thinner yarns, you're gonna have to do more rounds to get a decent amount. And the thicker ones will also go a lot faster. Um, So it's all personal preference and it's super easy. And I usually just go till about um eighth of an inch or quarter an inch whatever's most comfortable at the furthest edge of the cd and then again tie a knot to end it and then tuck tuck the tail under what you've already done so that you don't see it um and that's really very simple so we could all weave together and and chat and then hold up our um our designs I also try to have the kids pick out a color scheme before they start so that they kind of know what they're working with. I try to have them use at least three colors so that it doesn't look, you know, like half yellow and half green or or whatever it is. And and to think maybe a pattern to create a pattern. Um, But again, depending on the age of your students, you can build in more criteria or less you know, depending on their capabilities and their ages. I have a question. Are there any tips for, because I'm thinking of my elementary kids and all, because I'm thinking I might want to do this with fifth grade because right. they've got to work their way up. But I cut my warp strings so long. <laughs> I'm like going in and out and I keep, it's, it's getting tangled. It. It, how do you keep up with your warp string and going in and through the, you mean my the string that you're doing not your weaving I'm not on that part yet I'm still okay so the string I just I just pull it through with my finger and 
you know, pull it wide and arms loose. And I, you just have to be very careful not to get it tangled. Okay. There's no, um, there's no other way that I can think of unless you wrap it around like a pencil and uh -huh. maybe put the pencil through the hole. So it's kind of like um, a spindle that you create for the kids to until it come until it runs out. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. That might be a way. So if they wrap their string all around the pencil and then you put the pencil in and out of the hole, that I might think I'm gonna try that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have any questions? How do you know how much yarn the children should take? You know, um, like starting out. Is there I a certain like them, yardage? I would do arms so like for the yarn. I guess for the little like, ones. You know, like the first you're starting right now where you did the thirty one. Like, right. did you ever calculate the yardage for that? I did. I actually, what I did was I pulled two and a half arms lengths, arm okay. wide, you know, put my arms wide and I, I counted two and a okay. half and cut that. And then I wrapped it and I still had about a foot and a half left over after okay. that. Okay. So, and again, you might use less if you use less than 31 spokes. Yes. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to cut enough so that I knew in my head, um, because that's the thing that, you know, we go to all of these, these workshops and they say, well, do this. And they're like, well, how much of it do you need? And it wasn't calculated. And I know for myself, I need to calculate so that you know how much to cut for each student um, so that they don't run out. Um, and as far as the yarn, depending on how many colors, I mean, you know, a, a really nice woven disc could be really cool with just scraps and pieces and whatever you find. And you just tie on and keep going. Um, so it really depends. It doesn't really matter. If they don't want to change color often, then you need a longer strand. If you want to change color often, then a shorter strand. A lot of it is personal preference and the mechanics are super easy. Anyone else have a question? So when I actually had all the finished ones, um, I laid them out on a table to determine the best, the best arrangement before I was hanging them. You know, cause you don't want like same color schemes next to each other. You kind of want contrast. Um, between them when you're hanging them. And then I just used a dowel stick, a really fat dowel stick. And I found wooden beads with really wide holes to put at the ends of mm -hmm. you know, each end of the dowel stick to hold it. And then the dowel stick itself looked really plain and I didn't feel like dealing with paint to give it a color. So I grabbed more yarn and made a fringe on the top to, to also take up space. Cause I think I had strung them a little lower and further away from the dowel than I wanted. So the fringe kind of took up some of that extra space. Um, and depending <laughs> on how many discs you have, by how many ever, how many kids finish them will determine the size of your tapestry and how wide of a dowel you want to make. But the cool part is that my students that I have now see it hanging in my room. They're like, what's that? And will we get to make that? Cause that looks really cool. <laughs> so I'm going to keep it on the back burner as a early finisher kind of a thing and start a new tapestry possibly. How many of you are high school? One, two, I have it on, uh, let me see if I have it, put it back on gallery view. So um, is this just two or three of us in high school? I can't see. So when we switched um, in, in February, we went to a new semester. So our fall semester ended and we started a spring semester. And I'm sure a lot of you can commiserate with me that the fall semester was just 
like hell. The kids didn't know how to come back and be still social. Know. They didn't know how to behave in a classroom. They didn't know how to behave with each other. They thought that um, they are in the building. So why do they have to be in the classroom? So they're yeah. in the hallways, hanging out in the stairwells. And it's like, oh my God. So yeah. nobody, I mean, they were in the building because they had to be, but they weren't being students. They weren't coming to class. They weren't doing the work. It was, it was a horrible. Yep. And it's like all of a sudden in the spring semester, everything seemed to finally click and they got it. So kids are coming, my classes are fuller than they were before COVID. And they're actually working and doing the work. And I'm feeling so much more positive because things are getting done. Um, it was rough for a while. I don't know how it, how it's, if it's different at the elementary level for you guys. Yeah, no, they're still acting out. Um, uh, yeah, there's lots of that still. <laughs> they're, 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 they've just cracked down in our school. The teachers are fried. What does crack down mean for you? Like uh, they, they, um, they got a team together and are dealing with the discipline and the and the stuff because the little kids we i do a charter school so i have like the disadvantaged kids and so uh -huh. the covid when they were out of school it really it really 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 affected them wow well a lot of them had no um no, parent, yeah. had no way to connect and no no devices. no we yeah. have a problem in our schools with element i mean with the kindergarten and first graders because uh -huh. they don't know how to act in a classroom because they've never been to preschool. Right. Oh, wow. So it's you totally know? new. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't even know how to act in school to begin with. And right. then when you put them in a social situation in a resource class, which we call them resources, yeah. and I know some people call them specials and things like that, right. um, they don't know how, how to make. Yeah. You know? So it's been a very large, um, struggle for many of us and like someone yep. was just saying it, it teachers are burned we're yep. exhausted the teachers yeah. are right yeah never felt so mentally it's different from physically you know when you're physically exhausted but my brain just cannot take yeah it's, it's mental and emotional and it's just, every day there's some other kind in high school we have had fights every yep. single day in the past couple of weeks somebody last week two of my boys were suspended one of them brought um um mac mace is it a can of mace or um ah the school wow. and his friend took the can no pepper spray that's what it is pepper spray yes. and he sprayed it around the entire fifth floor <sighs> of our building so the fifth floor had to be evacuated the boys are suspended for this because you know they, they think they're playing games and they don't realize it's poison right um, right um it's just right. it's, it's, it's really <laughs> I don't. Wow. I don't know if if things are ever gonna. I don't know. Come around. It's gonna take years. Yeah, yeah. It really I'm, is. Yeah, I'm actually a preschool teacher. <laughs> oh and, my god. Um, and at, we're we're a private preschool, and so we were actually able to be open all of last year, and you know. We, we just had to close in the spring of 2020, okay. like everybody else did. Right. And we were doing virtual classes, which, of course, for a preschooler, you know, the whole point yeah. of preschool is to learn to get along with others. And when yeah. you don't have anybody you have to share yeah. with, yeah. you know, you it, don't. but being open the last two years has been a huge blessing for the families, as you can imagine. And right. also for the kids, because even with the masks and the separating and the keeping only your class together, you can't play with other kids that aren't in your class because there could be an outbreak. And then we would have to send the whole school home because we wouldn't know who'd been in contact with who. And oh, my God. So um, anyway, it's uh, it it really has been so 
encouraging to see these kids have normalcy in their lives that way and learn what, you know, the kids always have to learn at those yeah. primary, those really early levels of being able to get along with others, learn to sit in a circle, learn to listen, learn to stand in a line, sort of, kind of, you know, <laughs> and, and so I, I do art with them and, um, and yeah, you know, it, it, there's the typical, you know, overactive kids and things like that, or ones that won't listen properly and everything. But frankly, we had that way before COVID anyway, so you get yes. kind of used to it. But I have, I have heard, you know, horror stories of what it's like for um, the older, you know, ages at coming out of COVID and everything. I just, I really it's feel for you guys. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, even the older kids, it's, it's, it's like, haven't you've been in school before? How can you be acting like this and think it's okay? You know, it's mm -hmm. not, it's not like your whole brain has been erased. I mean, you do have the experience of being in a building for at least 10 years of your life. How, how can you, I don't know. Yeah. Oh man. But you know, I, I have seen a change for the better in the last couple of weeks since we started spring semester so I'm hopeful um it was rough for everybody and and when I went back they had me teaching two things out of my normal content that I'd never done before they wanted and I understood the reasoning my principal wanted the least amount of materials um to be used because you never knew if we were going to be yeah. quarantining right. again right, right. So you can't right. leave half used materials laying out and not know if you're ever coming back to it and whatever. So they gave me a music class. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm not a music teacher. I don't know what I'm supposed oh to do. <laughs> yeah, that would they, be a nightmare for me. <laughs> it was, I went home and cried and then like, okay, you're going to give me this. Then I'm just going to watch movies and talk about the music in the movies. And that's what we're going to do. Um, yeah. Believe it or not, the kids hated that. All they had to do was watch the movie and answer questions about the movie and the music. And they hated it. So it was misery for all of us. And then they also gave me a photography, digital photography class, which I was kind of excited about. They all hated it because they were sick of being digital. Uh, and that never occurred to me. You know, the, everything is online they missed being tactile, getting dirty, touching stuff, making things. So it was torture and misery because nobody wanted to do anything online. So I said to my principal, look, here's the situation. Um, and, and, you know, the, the federal government was throwing money at all the arts. Yeah. Finally. So they're like, look, we have all this money, spend it. I'm like, okay, you want me to spend this money? Can I have my three art classes, my, you know, my regular art classes back again? So I gave the kids a choice. I let them vote. So they had a little ownership over what they're going to be doing. And I offered them like five or six different classes. It was drawing and painting, um, 3D design, fiber art, digital photography. I threw that in because some of them liked it, but not enough. Um, architecture and environmental design and a couple of other ones and everybody I was shocked one whole class picked fiber arts so that's what I'm do I did wow. I did basket weaving with them bas coil baskets which they totally loved they're like I want to do more stuff like this um yeah the other classes, three of them picked painting and drawing. So I actually started them by having them make their own journals, the stitched stitch journals, which they loved. And then the third one did, um, they picked a 3D design class. So I'm going to be doing a lot of sculpture with them. Nice. And everybody is so happy. And I'm like, okay, I'm back in my comfort zone. The kids are happy, so there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And mm, great. you gotta like, you know, wait it out and do your best. <clears throat> the kids are all like, why couldn't we do this stuff in the beginning? I'm like, because I was told what I had to do. Yeah. 
you know? And yeah. I'm hearing, um, you know, little, little chirpings that some, some of the professionals think we're gonna have another, another round of this and mm -hmm. still quarantine again, maybe not till the fall, but <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, there's well, another apparently. there's another variant happening yeah. right now. So yeah, in Germany and, and Korea too. It's not Omicron. It's a new one. I can't no, remember it's, what they called it's, it. It's, it's yeah, it's something it's B like, or it's A like or Omicron two or something. Three or, yeah, it's okay. like a stupid version. It updated oh, itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, thing keeps updating. <laughs> Oh, like, my oh God. you got that one? Let's let's screw you up again and and start yeah. over. With the ha, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah. You got a vaccine for that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, right, right, right. Uh, we we need to have a smart vaccine that can update. Yeah, there you go. Right, exactly. Can update. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what? Well, what would you wish for about that? I'm sure there's a whole crew of people out there who are like, I knew it. See, this is all Bill Gates. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God. Um, Lisa, yes, you just tie on the next color at the very end of the first one or wherever you want to end it. So and when then, you tie on the new one, do you tie it to the, 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 what was your weft or do you tie it to the warp at that point? No. Like, do you tie you, you tie it to the yarn tail of whatever. Okay. Okay. I guess okay. that's the weft you said. The weft is the yarn, right? The weft is the, is, is what the you're string. weaving with. Yes, correct. Okay. So wherever you want to, whenever you decide you want to switch colors, you cut it and tie on the next color. Got it. Okay. Yeah. You're going back to the early Marvin. You don't get. Thank you. I'm embarrassed to ask this, but am I the only one having trouble working mine? Um, do you want, like, like, want get tangled. Carolyn, do you want to hold it up and I can look at it? I, I, I got it. It's just I keep getting tangled. Oh. <laughs> it's like I can't oh. do it very fast. I have to keep on. I tried the pencil thing and then it was too thick around my pencil to get through the hole. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I'm like trying to figure out, did I cut too much screen? I don't. How many arm lengths did you cut? Well, I'm a little person, so um, my arms aren't very big. So, so I cut more than what you were saying because I thought, well, my arms don't reach very far. Well, but I was I estimating three, it was at three yards. Um, but, you probably could have done just three arm lengths. Okay. Or four, and then... It wouldn't be such a ball of string itself. How much yeah, have, I, have you gotten almost all the way around? Uh, I'm halfway. <laughs> I'm hearing some yelling in the background. I'm not sure who who that is. I don't, I think there's oh. somebody's very loud. And I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know, Michelle. Oh, okay. You guys have beautiful art rooms. <laughs> I have, I'm art. I'm art on a cart. For oh, five, that's horrible. For four, five hundred kids. Five hundred. Yeah, about wow. almost close to five hundred. Yeah, oh at a charter school at K through six. Where do you store their stuff from a cart? <laughs> You're laughing at me. <laughs> no, um, I've become very inventive. I do have cabinets, but I, um, but I carry a lot of. I put like a set of markers in in a um in ziplocs set of uh, and did a bunch of them and i said put a set of colored pencils in ziplocs and did a bunch of them and then i did a set of crayons and did a bunch of them so what about the I, students projects do you do I, they the leave them in their room kind of a thing? no mostly it's flat and i leave it in the room okay you know, I can't really work with paint because I have no water source. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's rough. I just started um art club, so that's kind of reassuring because they want to be there and the kids are like, wow, yeah, we can do, you know. So do you have um, a room to do art club? 
Did they uh, get one of the other classrooms. Oh, good. Yeah. I think, Mom, you were on a cart once, weren't you? You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Uh, now we're going to lose her face because every time she, uh -oh. she, she disappears. <laughs> yeah. Mom is a retired art teacher at the elementary level. Uh, okay. See, I called it. Your face disappeared. What the heck? No, my face is still <laughs> Now we got you. Okay, so we can hear you and see you. Okay. So on, weren't you on a cart once? I was on a cart more than once. Like every yeah. third year or so, I would lose my classroom. Uh -huh. And I had a, a very, very small part of a room where all the aides would sit with a cabinet where I kept my stuff. I've got um, a wall. A what? You, think, you must they have just got homeless. Me, they just gave me new, ca more cabinets. So, because they're very pro in the charter school, the founders very pro art. So I, I made it. I was lucky because I made it a, a list, and I know it was close to five grand. Wow! And I got what I wanted. Good. So now I could order more. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's what I had when I was teaching in Spain. At the American yeah. school, they, they just asked me what whatever want? I wanted. They said, whatever you need, you can have. Yeah. Just tell that's, us and we'll order it. That's what they said to me. And I was like, I because I went and got hired in September. And I was like, do you have a budget? Oh, no. Just, you know, write down what you need. We'll buy it. Yeah. I was like, I told my other friend, our teachers, I was like, and they're like, go on. Yeah. <laughs> I have the same you. situation. <laughs> I had asked yeah, them if I that. had a budget too. And she's like, just don't worry about it. Just give me a list of everything that you need. Wow. And put it in, you know, like must have or priority order and we'll get you what we can. And every year since it's, it's 19 years, 18 years I'm at the school, I've, they've given me everything on my list, everything I wow. asked. Wow. Yeah. That's not true again, a lot of schools. Yeah. I remember one year I interviewed for a job at a junior high school in Brooklyn. And when I asked about the supply, they said, um, you have to get your own. We don't have any budget <gasps> or supplies. Yeah. The last art teacher bought everything herself. That's I said, wow. goodness. And said goodbye. <laughs> yeah, so, really. It was awful. Oh. I mean, we all spend money outside of our budgets anyway on our kids. At least yeah. I know I do. I spend hundreds of dollars on top of, because yeah. you can't always know in the beginning of the year what you're going to need right. you know, yep. halfway through. Yep. Um, so I always end up spending my own money. And it's not, it's not just a little bit, you know, it's literally, yeah, yeah. I could spend up to $500 throughout the course of a year of my own money, if not more. Yeah. Um, so this year, thank God, they were like, all right, whatever you spend outside of what we order, submit it for reimbursement because they have all this money that they have to spend it or lose it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Drink cooler and bucket for water. Oh, for the, for the art on a cart. A drink cooler and a bucket for the water. Well, uh, you know, when we were yeah, in the yes, did you but, try it? Have you tried that, Kathleen? No, um, no, but that's a good idea. But the problem is, is I have, tomorrow I have seven classes back to back, except for, Ooh. wait, there's a break. There's four back to back. And then uh -huh. there's, and then there's another th three back to back in the afternoon. Okay. Wow. I was going to say it's legal to have you go more than four in a, in a, you know. Yeah. Well, and, but most of it's, it's a weird schedule though. And now I want to paint, but they were like, you know, I said, can I use the janitor's closet? And then the person who runs the whatever human resources, she know, but I, cause I never had a problem before using a janitor's closet. And she's like, no, you can't do that. I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my what god! If, what if you talk to the janitor himself? Ah, uh, yeah, I could. Yeah. Bypass. Well, she didn't want that. me to. She didn't want me to. Yeah. That got. Fixed. Why? Why would she tie your hands? It's to her but, benefit. To but you know. She doesn't. She. It, charter schools are 
so different. They're, it's, they're, t- they're, this one's very top heavy and there's a lot of people running around. They all have degrees and they all like, and they, you know, sit in their office and then they come out and they go, we're, we're going to do this. I'm like, okay. Well, that yep. sounds like the board of ed, the New York yep. City Department of Education. They all yep. tell us how to do our jobs and they haven't yep. been in the classroom in 30 years. Well, yep. um, yeah, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Why don't you try surviving COVID and then go yep. in a classroom and tell me how to do my job? Yep. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. At, at my school, we have um, <clears throat> a couple of classrooms that we use now upstairs, and um, there are no sinks in the room, and uh-huh. and I have to and and I originally I did have a room that was going to be. The enrichment room and that was going to be where I would pull kids and do stuff and and that had a sink and and the first few months I had it and it was so exciting because I had a sink right there and I could wash my stuff and 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 then it turned into the library and (laughs) so um, then it was like okay so then they had too many kids in my enrichment sessions to fit comfortably in uh, the room anyway so then it was like i'll just go to their classroom it's no big deal yeah but then i have to pile everything on a cart yeah and you get the around. teacher books like some of them don't want every they want every you know it's like you, you have, oh yeah i have, to deal, with, I have yeah. to deal with 40 teachers and they're like all women it's like sometimes that's very tricky yeah, yeah. It can be, most it of can them be. are okay but like yeah. that's a lot of navigating of personalities. Let me tell you. Uh, yes, it it is. is. Yeah, it mm. is. And when you have the rooms with no sinks, then and we we had no water source. And actually, the very first year um, uh, dealing with COVID, we weren't allowed to use the restroom on that floor, <sighs> and because it Oy. would, you know, somehow um, affect the other population that uses the building on the weekends and so it was just like really we're you know it gets cleaned in between, but right. we weren't so we couldn't i would have to carry jugs of water up yep. as well as have bins so because you know especially preschool most of the stuff's pretty messy <laughs> yeah it was it was, yeah. it was frankly a nightmare and so it's still challenging but it's better than it was but yeah, yeah. have you guys yeah. ever tried the um watercolor brushes with watercolor pencils oh yeah no but that i haven't done the brushes. marker that way too yeah yeah definitely mark that yeah. and just yep. use if you bring a water jug in a bucket and give every yep. mm-hmm. kid or every two kids a cup of water yeah and then they could do the pencils and then they can get the benefit of the watercolor a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's a here is, good idea. So you guys, this is how far I've gotten. Oh, look. Oh, that's pretty. <gasps> right? Do you do both sides? No, I only did. This is what the back looks like. So I'm only doing the front. And I decided I wanted to change colors. So I cut my yarn short. I'm just going to, I don't even know what kind of knot it's called, but I'm going to We're take not. both of these together and just make a loop knot this way so that, I don't know if you can see. So I tied them both together. Can you see that? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm just How gonna, do you hide your knots? What was that? How do you hide your knots while you're- Oh, once you go around, you can just take a needle or even a small crochet hook and pull right. it under your weaving to hide okay. it. Okay, <clears throat> gotcha. Yeah. So now I'm just gonna keep going until I wanna change my color again. Well, See, I, I, like, I like the smaller, it almost looks like a honeycomb. Yeah. And yes. I, that's why I, I added. I love spot. that. Yeah, I have so many. Yeah. I did the that. thirty-one, and it looks much prettier at the center. It's a tighter weave. Yeah. I was thinking that. That's beautiful because I've got. I have fifteen, and uh-huh. and that's mine. Ooh, so that far. looks good too. Well, that looks good too. <laughs> That but I only too, I Kelly. only had string. I forgot to bring home yarn. And I didn't oh. have yarn, so I'm just using my kitchen twine. You know? Okay, <laughs> but you're getting the so mechanics of it down, and exactly, 15, and fifteen might work for the little kids. 
Yeah, but I think that's what I was thinking. I, I love the look of the, the many, but yeah, I would have to strip no all of my CDs because they wouldn't be able to do that. Really? They can't. They, they can't even draw a straight a border around a paper. Oh, with a mine ruler. too. Mine can't do that too. Yeah. So I'm Wait, even after I'm... demonstrating. Oh, these are nice. Oh, you I'm guys are doing great. Right They're beautiful. Yeah. So how many, Niara, and how many um, spokes did you did you tie? Seventeen. So you made seventeen. Oh. Michelle, how many did you make? I made thirteen. Thirteen. <laughs> wow. Okay. And Kelly, how many did you make? I did twenty-one, and right now this is right where my knot is. So I've done this before with with my elementary kids and my older kids. Um, right. Right here is where my knot is. So then as I come around my second one, somebody was just asking about the knot. As yep. I come around in time with my purple, I just push my knot down as I go yep. over the area. Yeah. So yeah. that'll just tuck my knot in. But I'm at 20, I did 21 spokes. Okay. See, so it, it's just what everybody's comfortable with and you you know your kids and what they're yep. able to work with. So yep. yeah, nice. They're beautiful. See, I love it when the project is easy and we could just sit and talk and- New. Did you send out a, a list of supplies for this when we did it? Yeah, it was on the on the flyer. Uh -oh. <coughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> also, a little trick to remember the weft yes. as opposed to the warp. Um, I tell the kids um, weft is woven from weft to right. Ah, instead good. of the up and down for the warp. Wow, oh, that's cute. Uh, and Left it helps. Right. Very they, good. They seem to remember. That's a good. Thank that's you. Really nice. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, I have to share oh. this magic trick also that I learned at um, at the conference. I can't remember what workshop it was, but everybody the, everybody has difficulty sometimes threading the needle. Mm -hmm. So if you take a little bit of glue from a glue stick, yeah. and put the <laughs> yarn end between your fingers. It'll flatten it right out and it'll go through any eye of, of the needle. It was so nice. stupid you easy. Can also like, I did not tape. figure that out all these years. <laughs> you can also Good. bend it. So my question is the more it. go ahead. Somebody the I don't more know. the more um yarns you have in the radial fashion, the tighter the weave, correct? Um, well, the weave gets tighter if you push it tighter. A lot of the kids, you know, they can go round and round and round, but if they don't tuck it tight to the center, yeah, um, it'll be very loose. But if you do oh. less, let's say you're doing like eight, <laughs> somebody's coughing, 17. Whoever that is, is okay. Are you yeah. okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, like so, if you do 17, don't you think that the the yarns that you're weaving are going to have more space. So it's not going to be as, you know, tight. Do you know there'll what I'm be, saying? There'll be more space side to right. side. Okay. But if, you, okay. if you tuck it in as you go around the okay. center, then it'll still be um, tight working from the center out. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, did Lisa leave already? I think she did. Thank you. I have to go. I appreciate oh, you, you having me, everybody. Aloha. Enjoy Hawaii and join us again. Thank you. Aloha. Okay. Aloha. Uh, aloha. Aloha. Oh, I, like I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm an elementary school teacher and I'm just thinking of like, I want to do this with one of my groups. Like, mm -hmm. how would I set up the tables and things? Like, how would I put the yarn out like in just like a basket and then kids can pull. Is there like any tricks to giving um, the That's a good question. Let's see, uh, okay. for each kid I would give, I would put a CD. You said you're elementary, right? Are you planning on pre warping the CDs for the kids or having them try to do it on their own? I might have them try to do it. Okay, so what I would do is put all the materials in a baggie for each child. I'm talking, I'm not talking about the wool, I'm talking about the CD, 
the string for the for the warp and a needle into a baggie with the kid's name on it. And then I would, however you serve, serve your yarn, um, you could, or however the kids sit, I have mine sit at tables for four. Um, you're welcome, Kathleen. Um, I, so I would put maybe a tray of different colors on their table, or I have lots of baskets of different yarn. So I could set it up at a help yourself kind of base station of yarn and you can get up and get whatever colors you want and cut it and go back to the table. Anybody else have any other suggestions? I pre-cut lengths of yarn for them. Um, and I have like, you know, like the bulldog clips that are magnetic. I hang those from my whiteboard and then I just loop them over like in different colors over the bulldog. So when they go over there, I just tell them to hang on to the, the yarn. Like it's like maybe 10 pieces of yarn or something of each color at a time. Right. They hang on to the yarn and they just pull one strand out. Oh, and that's a great so idea too. Yeah, so they're kind of pre-cut. And then when a, when a yarn color runs out, they just tell me and then I cut some more arm lengths and hang them off of those. And then that way they can just grab one at a time. So they're just hanging off the hooks on my whiteboard by color. You just I did something, me. sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, I, I did something similar where I have a hanger that has um, these like uh, hooks that you put on, I guess, to hang pants from. And I use um, binder, round binder hoops and hang those and do the same thing. I run the yarn through and I teach the kids, you hold the bundle and you pull one from the bottom while you're holding the bundle so that the whole bundle doesn't come flying off, you know? But definitely for elementary, yeah, you need to have it pre-cut and ready for them to go or you're just gonna have a big giant knot ball. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Actually, I had seen that at the conference, one of the workshops I took, the teachers did that exact thing. They um, pre-cut it and wrapped it over a hanger, a wire hanger, and, mm -hmm. and then loosely tied the bundle under the, the hanger itself and told us also the same thing, hold the bunch and just pull one at a time. Mm -hmm. It was okay. genius, genius. I like that. Threading the needle too, if you pinch the very end really tightly and so that you just have this teeny tiny little bit, you can wiggle it through the eye of the needle and it goes right through. But I have to say, I really like the idea of the glue because even if you do it this way and it's easy, it still can come undone. Mm -hmm. The ends come undone while they're working, but the yeah. glue, I would think, would hold it all together. I use a piece of paper for my threading too. So a tiny little piece of paper folded in half, you put the uh, end of the yarn in. I always tell the kids, it's like putting the hot dog in a bun and mm -hmm. then they slide <laughs> the paper through and that just works perfect because they just yeah. lay that there and then they slide the paper through the needle and then the ends don't fray. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the white ones. That what works. you do like for Christmas ribbon, you could have a box with eyelets or just holes and you put the, uh, it's like a shoe box and you make holes and then you put the yarn inside and then you have the string coming out from the hole so they could take it from there. I tried that That's a too. Great idea. I thought that was a really good idea until the kids would start to cut it too short and the ends would go back into the box. <laughs> 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 but I think also what I used to do is also have like an example of the length. And so when they're doing it, they have that, that length that they have to match it to. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. You can yeah. tape it to the yeah. end of a table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I and think they I learn about, they learn about, trick. and they learn about proportion and, you know, like they learn more, you know, that yep. way. Yep. And they're more responsible. And also you could have someone, one of the kids like be a helper that stands there and helps them. You know what I mean? Some kids are there like to be helpers. Yeah. Right. For the younger grade levels though, it really does help to pre-cut, but I agree for yeah. the third, fourth and fifth grade, 
yeah. you could actually um, have that pre-cut piece taped down to a table end or something, and they can do their own measuring. Yeah. The cutting. I saw a brilliant use also for um, used hand sanitizer wipe containers. You throw a ball of yarn into one of those and have the string hang out and cut it from there. Huh. Like somebody had taken idea. a picture and put it on Facebook and tied about 12 of those containers together with duct tape and yeah. each each one had a different ball of yarn color and one string popping through where you would pull the wipey out so that's another way to to keep the colors organized and sorted yeah i thought that was brilliant since there's a million and one sanitizer containers now right keep them out of the landfill anyway yeah, exactly. Amen. Exactly. I think they should design the yarn. I used to be a product designer, like a dental floss where the yarn mm. can come in the case. Yes. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Would that be cool? I think that would be cool. Mm -hmm. I think you should do that for your retirement projects. There yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah, I have to get I have to get a patent attorney. <laughs> oh, great oh. ideas. <laughs> This is why this is important because everybody teaches everybody something else, something different. I, so I guess you could add beads to this also. Yes. Oh, I think I saw, was there a post earlier about beads? I missed it. I was uh, trying to get to it and hang on, let me see. Um, yes, who was it? It was Kathleen. She shared an example found on Facebook post artist unknown I can picture it with beads added strands dangling chenille stems woven in feathers and other textures ah, okay. yeah, let's yeah. see maybe if I open the link she put it in the chat so if you guys want to oh okay a sample of a finish yeah, I, I saw it I saw it it's cute. very cute yeah it, that's that looks like it was um the little the lower grades because it has very few let me see one two three four yeah six seven yeah. eight nine ten yeah there's eleven yeah spokes but it's cute okay. so with the 13 spokes and I actually used yarn to warp it because I didn't have any string uh -huh. um, with the 13 spokes I've actually been using no needle at all I've just been finger weaving it oh me so too easy. yeah so well, they, kind of they'd have trouble, I think, some of them, but my kids would, but I'm finger weaving it. But mm -hmm. um, I think that um, the big plastic needles would work great for my kids with this. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I have to share my screen. Um, Kathleen sent me pictures of the gourds that we were talking about earlier. Can you guys see that? Oh, oh wow. wow. Oh, wow. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Wow. They look like they were um with the wood burning pen. What's yes. that? Beautiful. Um, wow. Gorgeous. So would you guys be interested in doing this having her do a session with these? Yeah. For I sure. wouldn't know where to buy, where you buy a gourd. I wouldn't even know where to buy a gourd. <laughs> where do, these are gourds? Like, yeah. Well, thank, like Thanksgiving food? time, they sell them. But dry are you talking about food? Like it's food? No, it I think was, it in, was food. It's hollow now and dried uh, out. Oh, beautiful. Maybe, maybe in a store like Home Goods or, or someplace where they That's sell. Beautiful. Maybe Love nice it. I sell them like the empty. Love it. I that mean, you me actually, you, if any of you are gardeners, you you actually can grow like gooseneck ones and also ones that are can um, are kind of intended to um, be used as like a birdhouse and stuff. And they 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 really, I think you know, naturally they have some fruit and stuff in the center, but um, they dry out very quickly and and. Um, they're kind of, you know, I think you can find seeds that actually are for that type. Um, oh. And uh, because otherwise, you know, I mean, I know that like I've seen them at farmer's markets and things like that, but yeah. it would be challenging to get a large number if you don't like grow them 
I have a nephew that grows them and stuff. And um, how long do they take to grow? I don't really know. <laughs> so <Sorry. laughs> I, I mean, I guess because you do start to see them in autumn that they probably grow over the course of the summer, you know, uh -huh. it's like growing a pumpkin or something, but they just have a different flesh and they have a tiny um, one. She there's a tiny one in the picture here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have look. to get in touch with her and, and, and set up a session with her for this because I've always wondered how, how I don't even know how to phrase it, how to do, how to do a gourd. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she put this link in the chat also, this picture, the link to this picture is in the chat if anybody wants it. That's Maybe. looking my picture. Hello. <laughs> Yes. Oh, me? yeah. Look at your painted. You've had that for forever. Yes. The painted gourd. Where did you oh, get that? Really? Is that from Spain? Where is that? I need. To... Uh, I don't think so. I don't remember where I got it. It's on one of our trips. Okay. But it's like it's in, incised. These lines are incised, and then it's painted, and it's got rat rattles inside. Well, that's oh. probably the seed since seed. it's never yeah. been open. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. I'm going to have to investigate. That's beautiful. Yes. And I think a lot of different cultures use gourds. Yeah, they do. Amazon sells gourds, but they're very expensive. Do they it's use a special tool? Use a special tool for engraving? I have um, no idea. Maybe oh. a linoleum cutting tool would work. Mm. I think it would be too slippery. I don't know. I, I have my my. She said she's a Dremel. I've had. Yeah, you could use a Dremel. That's right. Yeah. She said that's what she uses to to um to carve it out. The Dremel. Oh, I'll have to get one of those. I have Dremels. I, maybe like dental tools. You know. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I still have my linoleum cutting tools from college, for God's sake. <laughs> well, I would be worried that you would slip on that shiny yeah. surface and slice your hand open. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, there's one that has, it's like a very tiny V. It's a V-shape v cut. So. It's too slippery. It, there's no nothing to grab the blade. So it would be really, really, that's not <clears throat> that's the right tool for that. Yeah, I guess you're right. I think drying those would be tricky, though. They might rot if you don't have the right environment. Yeah, I don't know how you go about doing that. You probably, like anything, Google it and Google it, find mm -hmm. a vendor. And Someone will tell you. <laughs> yeah, and negotiate, I guess. That's, That's definitely something that either you'd have to buy on your own. Yeah. Or like get ten thousand bids, you yeah. know, so that you could get yeah. a purchase order from school. Well, there's some on on mini ones, like fifteen of them is like thirty four dollars on Amazon. Ooh, wow. Really? Yeah. See, yeah. Amazon has everything. I love Amazon. They do. <laughs> that's not bad for little ones. That's not yeah. bad. Yeah. I wonder. See, now you're making me think. Because I really <laughs> love the idea of the beaded gourds. So yeah. if I could do that with my students. They use them for, um, they have instruments, I think, in Africa yes. where there's a beating cover over them and you uh -huh. shake them. And and make you them shake oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, with the white know. shells, right? The white yeah, shells right. on yeah. those. Yeah. yeah. It's like a mesh. Uh huh. <laughs> Oh, Kathleen's not feeling good. Allergies. Yeah. Okay, Tis the take season. A take a look. Dav, can you see it? What? My, uh, yeah. Looks good. Oh, pretty. You started with blue and, oh, you're still blue. I'm still blue. I'm about to change. Okay. And you did the 32 by 31. 31. 31. Right. Okay. Yeah. Jay Noble, um, thank you for joining us. I hope we see you next time. I don't know who that was.
Bye. Uh, well, they said thank you. Um, I have a um, a variegated, is it variegated or great gradated yarn that I'm hoping will change colors. I may have to cut it shorter. Can you do both sides? No. Well, you could, I guess. I mean, I mean, yeah. if you're going to hang it up in midair, it's going to turn around. Yes. Unless you use it like a wall hanging and it stays against the wall. True. You could also kind of, I guess, if you weighted them down, you could do it as um, chimes or a mobile for outdoors. Maybe. I don't know. It's just a great idea to get rid of old CDs. I have so many. Me too. They can maybe even put their picture on Yeah. It. yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you meet once a month? Um, I try to do at least twice a month. And um, so this month, to, this is our first one, I think, in March. Yeah, because the first week was the conference. Okay. Um, I crocheted so that one. Again, I crocheted and I have, parent, I have parent conferences next week. So our next session will be on the 31st. And then I might be able to nail Kathleen down for another session. And I have another one on the works, in the works. I've never heard of, this woman is in England. Oh and boy. She, she teaches, she made a set of, of videos for us. So I would have to play it by video. Um, using a latch hook for rug hooking to crochet. That's her method. Um, she hey. teaches kids in high school to do it. And she does free form crochet designs. And she actually crocheted like abstract faces that would hang oh on the wall. Yeah, it's kind of really cool. cool. Um, so I'm gonna have to figure out, she, she has a book on, guess where? Amazon, um, <laughs> <laughs> teaching, teaching her method how to do it. Um, and I'd never heard of anybody doing crochet with a latch hook, but um, I thought I might give that a try, but I have to test it out first and make sure her videos are clear. I can show you what I just did. I did a crochet necklace. Uh huh. I'll sh I don't know. I can see if I could show you. I don't know. Okay. Can I pin you for everybody to see? Yeah, let me see if I could. <laughs> Have my, uh... <laughs> Here she is. Hello. All right, guys. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. And I need to get my uh, tripod. I have my tripod. Let me see if I can mount it and then I could show you what it is. So I crocheted. I'm a crocheter. Can you see it? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're, and little, I, they're little discs. Yeah, and it's a necklace. I put the yarn, the, the rat tail. It's the rat tail. And then I put little stones inside. Oh, yeah. that's cute. Yeah. So I like crochet jewelry. It's really cool. I've seen really small, like teeny, teeny, tiny crochet jewelry. I've never seen the big ones. Yeah. I always yeah. like, I wish I could do that because never, I don't know. My grandmother used to be able to sit in her chair, watch the prices right. And her hands, <laughs> her hands would be flying and I would <laughs> be an amazement how she kept track of what she was doing. Yeah, I love crocheting. She crocheted since she was a very young person. Is she, did she, we, her hands knew what to do. She didn't even have to, and she would yeah. talk a mile a minute while she was doing it. Yeah. Right. It's like riding a bike. Oh she, used to earn money, she used to earn money crocheting. She worked for Denison. And it, during the, the war years, she made a lot of things for them out of twisted crepe paper crocheted yeah and she wow. earned money doing it she was amazing that's where you get your talents from <laughs> probably partially <laughs> was that was that your grandmother your mom's mom 
Yes. My mother, my mother. That, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I used to crochet bags. I had a bag business. Oh. Um, yeah, I used to be a sweater designer and then I turned accessory designer and then I turned kitchen and bath designer and then I turned art teacher. Ah. <laughs> oh, wow. I get I get bored. It's like I always have to have excitement. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Yeah. I used to be a textile designer many years ago. Wow. Is that, is that the mom? Yeah, that's that's my mom. You. Yes. You're mom, all I, love you. I love this mom. She's amazing. <laughs> Where do you live, Mom? I live on Long Island. Oh, okay. About an hour away from Steffi. Where's wow. Steffi? Live? Steffi's in Far Rockaway, Queens. Oh, yeah. okay. You near the beach there in Far Rockaway? Yes, I'm four oh, blocks nice. from the beach. Oh, nice. Oh, nice I love. I, I love going there. It's so beautiful. It certainly is. <clears throat> well, Naponza Beach is beautiful. Those homes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know a lot of far rockaway is is building up and so many of the homes are crazy ridiculous prices like you would never yeah think. Yeah. yeah especially because so many pockets of this area are undesirable and yeah. then you have all of these big mansions popping up that just you know right next door to other stuff so the housing market is is exploding. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. I mean, the house I rent the <clears throat> whole first floor of an old colonial. It's over a hundred years old. Oh, nice. I'm in love with the house I live in, and the uh, the the landlady who owned it when I moved in just sold it to um, a very nice young couple. And I know what she paid for it um, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. 2017. And she made more than twice what wow. she paid for it in, in six, wow. five, six years. Yeah. Wow. The market wow. is just crazy down here. Yeah. Yeah. So here's my second round of color. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, let me nice. Oh, oh pretty. Nice yeah. Oh, nice. I like you got it. beans. Sure. That's not really pretty. There we go. Oh, and you. Yeah. Okay, so you put beads in, Maureen. Nope, okay. I have no beads. Oh, who? Somebody else has beads? Maureen does. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Wait, let me put take off my spotlight. And let's see. I love that. Maureen. Oh, that's so cute. That is so cute. They're pony beads, and I only did 11 because I'm elementary too. How do you put the beads? Yeah. In? I've never put beads in my weaving before, and I've always wondered how you do it. I yeah. don't know. I just like every other just one, I go up. and I just add the bead, and it just works. Yeah, okay. That's, that's, that's a great, great idea. I can't find my beads. I don't know where, where they are. And now I'm back to regular weaving. And I'm sure after you add a bit more, Ooh. you can add more oh, beads. Oh, wow, Michelle. Nice. Wait, hold it up again one more time. OK. Let's see. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Yeah, see, so the more spokes you have, the slower it goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, can't. I, I have, yeah. like, yeah. 750. I have like 750 <laughs> kids a week. Yeah. And I have six, six grade wow. levels. Yeah. And each grade level has a hundred kids about a hundred. Yeah. Oh boy. So I have to, that would be a lot of prep. And I can't, I mean, 11 would be about what I could handle. Mm hmm. Yeah, but you, I would just do it for like fourth and fifth grade or something, you know, like right. just right. And then see, maybe it's uh, that's another still three hundred kids. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And maybe so, just do you know one grade. I mean, yeah. You know, and they'd have to bring in their own CDs, or you would. No, support. I have a lot of them here. Okay, they're from old programs the school had, and they were throwing them out, and <laughs> I snagged them all. Being the art teacher, yeah. 
but oh, I, I use them help. for circle stencils anyway. Yeah. yeah. So they work yeah. really well when I hand them out to the kids so that they can use them for a project yeah. if I need cool. a circle. I actually did. They can, a, they can a even thing. do radial design. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I actually did a thing with the kids where it was something I saw on Pinterest or or I, I can't remember or Facebook, but it was um, using a CD and then gluing. And yet you really, hot glue doesn't really work. I discovered, um, and crazy glue didn't work, but I got that E, what is it, E600, you know, yeah. one of the epoxy stuff, whatever, and <clears throat> used um, a marble. You put a marble on one side and... On the other side, you get one of those, you know, those those squeezy um, um, applesauce containers. And mm -hmm. being at a preschool, that we have many, 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 many of those, and they're beautiful colors. So I would always save them and you know and everything. And oh, don't throw that away. Give it to Miss Julie. Give it to Miss Julie. <laughs> and I just wash them, and I hung on to them for the longest time. And then I discovered. Um, well, I saw this thing and you just glue that on the other side of the marble, which is, you know, glued to the center of the CD. And then they can spin it with the marble being on the paper and you put like watercolor, liquid watercolor on it. And as it spins, it spatters. And so it's, oh. it's this really cool spatter design thing. It, it, and it worked really well. It was a really fun thing. So, um, for, I don't know, for elementary, that might be yeah. a fun. What applesauce thing are you talking about? Yeah, you, well, you know, those squeezy um, things and they have those, usually they're kind of a round lid. Um, so it's sort of like the, the, like the squeeze yogurt or- Like a squeeze. tube, yeah, okay. Yeah, and- And you and put the watercolor those... inside of it? No, 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 you no. glue that and the marble to either side of the CD. And then you take the CD and- you can put it, put the marble down on paper, the marble side down on paper and put some liquid paint or really thin tempera paint, anything, and spin it with the, with the, the juice to, or the squeezy candle thing that you've glued onto the CD and you spin it and it spins around and it spatters the, the paint everywhere. It makes a really cool design. You're, you're you know. making like a top out of the CD. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Top. Yeah, and exactly. then as it, it travels, takes it takes the paint with it. Right. It. it just, it just, and it just flings off of it. Okay. So it just. Do you have yeah. to wear a protective covering? Yeah. <laughs> well, you might have to. I did it in a lidded, a, a box with um, some big box that something, you know, TV had come in or something. It had wide, you know, thick, um, high sides because I wasn't sure if it would get on the kids' clothes or anything, but it didn't really go that far but i guess it would depend on how much you know yeah. you put on oh of, wow kelly look, look at that. that controlling that let's see love that color that's beautiful oh boy mm. i love it wow yeah green, it looks like purple. Purple. wow beautiful. beautiful that's gorgeous great color choices and i like that you don't make the yarn go all the way to the end because i like seeing the lines you know, and the other, That's yeah, really and cool. also it, it makes you think about using the color of the CD. I just mm -hmm. have the silver side I'm doing, but yeah. the other side is yellow. That would be kind of neat. Yeah, That's a good idea. I'm on the silver side. I'm just kind of finishing up right now because I'm going to head out. But um, um, I don't know who was earlier talking that they're on a cart or, or is that person still here? Me. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. In the past, too, I've been on a cart a bunch, too. Um, but one of the things that I do with my kids now that might work too is we do like the in plain air painting, but I use those watercolor brushes that actually fill with water. Yeah. Uh -huh. The handle does. So I've used those on a cart too. So then I've done that with just marker or the watercolor pencil, but then you have uh -huh. those already pre-filled. So you don't really even need cups of water. Um, right. Yeah. I've taken those outside just on little, like I said, just little journeys outside too to paint, but those worked pretty decent on a cart as well. So oh, that's a good idea. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Well, I'm out, ladies. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah.
I'm gonna I'm head out to I'm start gonna, to turn I, into a pumpkin. I go to sleep. Oh yeah. oh, it's already eight thirty. <laughs> Thank it's you guys. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Oh, Thank you. Right. See you next. Uh, see you in two weeks. Thank you. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. Thank you, Stephanie. You're welcome. Enjoy yourself and have a good week. Bye. 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 Mom, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Mom, are we finishing? Yes, everybody's saying goodbye. What time is it? I it's eight thirty, Mom. Oh, my watch stopped. How do you like that? <laughs> All right. Okay. Good night, everyone, and I'll see you Good tomorrow, night. Mom. Okie dokie. Bye. Bye.